We'll begin our service this morning with the uh, hymn, Lord, the light of your love is shining. Blessed are you, O Christ, Son of God. You were before time began and came into the world to save us. Blessed are you, Son of Righteousness. You shine with the Father's love and illumine the whole universe. Blessed are you, Son of Mary. Born a child, you shared our humanity. Let heaven and earth shout their praise. With all the voices of heaven, we celebrate the coming of our Savior. Let heaven and earth shout their praise. With all the creatures on earth, we sing and dance at his birth. Praise and honor and glory to you, O Lord Most High. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. 
He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O come, let us worship. Reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 to 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. We give you the... You give them drink from the rivers of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. God of justice and of mercy, open the eyes of sinners, that they may see the light of your truth, know the power of your love, and share in the bounty of your heavenly table, through Jesus Christ our Savior. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another, the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who will launch to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll join together in the responsory. 
From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. The heavens bear witness to your wonders, O Lord, and your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. Who is like you, Lord God of hosts? O mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Love and truth go before you, your face. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. Has Edie joined us yet? No? The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Yeah. Standing there were six yeah. stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each yeah. holding twenty yeah. or thirty. Now it's all over. Holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out, and take it to the chief steward. So they took it, and when the steward tasted the wine that had become the water that had become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We'll join in the canticle, You Are God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with all your saints to glory everlasting.
in the Epiphany season, <clears throat> the readings uh, have to do with the identity of Jesus and relationships. Last Sunday we looked at the baptism of Jesus and how that revealed him as the Son of God and how it speaks to us about our identity as Christian people. We also recognize that we are in a special relationship with Jesus and God the Father because of our baptism. Promises were made for each of us and that covenant relationship is something which has been renewed on many occasions. Traditionally we, uh, we renew it at Easter Vigil and at other see, uh, time, uh, Pentecost uh, four times throughout the church's year at least. We are in an ongoing and developing relationship with the living God who cares deeply about each one of us. In today's readings we hear again how Jesus' identity is revealed. This time in the miracle of the, uh, at the wedding feast of Cana in Galilee. With each story we take another step in getting to know Jesus better. But let's begin this morning by looking at the reading from Isaiah. This part of the book is written some time after the people of Israel returned from exile in Babylon. For about 50 years they had been held captive in Babylon. And then Cyrus takes over the Babylonian Empire, the Persian king takes over the Babylonian Empire and changes the policy. Now the exiles are allowed to return to their own land. The second Isaiah looked forward to their return and saw all the possibilities that lay ahead. But once they had arrived back home, they found a city in ruins. Their dreams of returning to the places remembered by the older members of the community aren't anything like they've pictured. They're going back to the same scenes that they left so many years before. We can imagine the refugees in many parts of the world today being told that it is now safe for them to return to their homeland. And yet what lies ahead of them are years of hard work under adverse conditions just to rebuild a little bit of their shattered lives. This was the type of setting in which the third Isaiah made his prophecy. Despite the many challenges that, that, that lay ahead, Isaiah saw a restored Jerusalem. He saw a different, uh, a different set, a system, a different setup than they had le left behind. It's not going to be the same. They're not going back to, to simply pick up where they left off. This is going to be something different, a new creation. Despite the many challenges that lay ahead, Isaiah saw that city restored. He claimed that it would be, he would neither rest nor keep silent until the restoration was as clear as the dawn. Forsaken and desolate would no longer be the names which to describe the holy city. Instead, the land would be called married because God was entering into a new relationship with them. Marriage was a symbol of hope for this writer, a symbol of a settled and secure future. The setting for our gospel reading is also a wedding feast in Cana. Mary, Jesus, and the disciples have been invited to the wedding. This was to be a great celebration for the whole community. Weddings are never just about the bond between a husband and a wife. The relationship of the couple with the broader community is also changing. New ties between families are being created. It's a new beginning for the entire village that needs to be celebrated by all involved in the life of that community. Now, most of us are familiar with all the details that have to be looked after for such an occasion. I remember making a big impression on my uh, future mother-in-law uh, before, uh, uh, before our wedding uh, when I said that you could put a wedding together in 20 minutes. And uh, she thought that it took significantly longer to do that. Uh, uh, I was of course referring to, to, to uh, if you knew what you were doing to pick out the readings and to set the various parts of the service in, into place. Uh, but uh, she thought it, it, it uh, took a little bit longer. The wedding clothes have to be selected and properly fitted. The food for the various occasions needs to be looked after. Who's going to do the cooking, bake the cake, etc.? What about the arrangements for the actual ceremony? 
who will be involved, and when and where will it take place. Music is always a big part of these events. Who will play for the procession and the dances? Are there any favorites that simply must be included? The details would be appropriate for a wedding of that time and culture, but the feelings are essentially the same. There would be a mixture of excitement and anxiety, but in the end everything would fall into place, and the memories would be, some, uh, would, would be something that they would cherish all their lives. Many of these images which Jesus uh, uh, talked about have become a part of our lives and show him as an intense, sometimes uh, almost always a very serious person in a lot of the, uh, the pictures that we have uh, by our artistic interpretation of Jesus. But this is not what is being portrayed here. Jesus is entering into the spirit of the occasion. He's genuinely happy for this couple and wants to be a part of their special day. Jesus chooses to be a part of everyday experiences in our lives too. The birthdays, the graduations, the weddings, the household parties are all occasions for the presence of Christ. That presence doesn't restrict the fun and the enjoyment, but rather it enhances it. Now hardly any wedding comes off without a, one mistake or two at least. I remember one uh, wedding that I did, did uh, where the person responsible for picking up the bride forgot uh, and 45 minutes later the bride eventually showed up at the church door. The only person a little bit more anxious than the groom was the organist that day who was, had gone through all the wedding music that she had brought with her and was about to go through it a, a second time or play What a Friend We Had in Jesus. Uh, but uh, eventually uh, the, the bride was, uh, arrived and the wedding proceeded. But something they'll never forget for sure. In, the, in this case, they have run out of wine for the feast. It would have been very embarrassing for the family. And so the mother of Jesus asks him to do whatever he can to save the day. As a matter of kindness and understanding, Jesus responds to the present ne presented need. He performs the first of his signs in John's Gospel, and because they gain some insight into his true identity, his disciples see that sign and believe in him. Now in writing this Gospel, St. John uses a similar pattern to the first chapter of Genesis. He begins the Gospel with the words, in the beginning, and then follows with various events fa falling on the different days of the week. If we read through the Gospel carefully, we find that the wedding feast took place on the seventh day. This we recall is the Sabbath. Now Jewish weddings do not usually occur on the Sabbath because they involve a, a legal contract, which would have been considered work and therefore not, uh, not legitimate to conduct on a, on, a, uh, on a Sabbath. One writer suggested that just as the Sabbath completed the old creation, so the transformation of the water into a superb wine marked the completion of a new creation. And such transformation is the source of great hope. And it's that sort of thing that we have to hang on to today, isn't it? To have, as we were thinking last week, to have a child is a great act of hope, isn't it? It's an act of hope in the future. To get married, to, to start a relationship with another per human being is a, an act of hope. It looks to the future. That the future is worth the investment. I think if ever the, uh, there was a need for, for focusing in on that hope and that generosity of God, that, that, that promise of God to, to the future, and that there would be a future and a, and, a, and a very important future, this is the time that we need to hear that message. Because hope is what keeps the t kept the tiny village going when the, uh, when the wine ran out at the festival. It's what keeps us going in the midst of all that we face in our world today. Amen. Uh, 
And so we're going to continue with our uh, next uh, hymn, Glory, Glorify Your Name. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the, forg the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Loving Father, thank you for being with us today and every day. We raise our hopes and prayers to you saying, Father, help us be your light. Father, help us be your light. Father, we pray for those who are bound by pressures to be something different or to meet someone else's expectations. Help us to be free and live only with your expectations, Lord, that we love one another and love you, Father. We pray to you saying, Father, help us be your light. Father, we pray for those who are lost in addiction or loneliness, lost in homelessness or hunger, lost in neglect, or intolerance, lost in abuse or injustice, lost in prejudice or hate. Help us shine on all who were lost with the care, with the light of your care, bright with determination and action. We pray to you saying, Father, help us be your light. We pray for those who are ill and suffering, for those 
who care for them and those who treat them. In our congregation, we pray for May, for Gloria Jean, for Lisa, for Nancy Warbeck, for Narda, for Jillian and Kathy, for Jean and Nancy, for Sandy, for Kendra, for Paulette, for Jane, for Bill C and Bill D, for Stephen, for Kim, for John and Tessa, and for Beth. And we add all those you wish to lift up, either aloud or in your own prayers. Father, we ask you to bless all who are ill and suffering with your loving care, renew their strength and take away their pain. Help us to be present to one another so that we can be your strength that heals. We pray to you saying, Father, help us be your light. Lord, we pray for your holy parish of Aylesford Berwick, encompassing St. Mary's Auburn, Christ Church Morden, and Christ Church Berwick. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reverend Anne Bush and Gordon in Alberton, Prince Edward Island, in the parishes of St. Peter's, Alberton, St. Luke's, O'Leary, Christ Church, Kildare Capes, and Holy Trinity, Alma. And we pray for the Reverend Dr. G. Wayne Short and Sheila in Christ Church, Cherry Valley, Prince Edward Island. We pray for our Primat, Linda, for our Bishop, Sandra, for our Rector, Reverend Edwin, and for our friends, Reverend Ed and Reverend Bert. We pray for all clergy and leaders in all faiths. Lord, guide us to extend your ministry beyond the walls of our church to your community and to the entire world. We pray to you saying, Father, help us be your light. Father, we pray for the leaders in every nation. Fill them with your light. Inspire them to honorable actions for the welfare of their people and empower them to bring an end to violence and war. Give all your leaders understanding, your understanding of integrity and justice for all people. Father, help them keep their faith stronger than their fears. We pray to you saying, Father, help us be your light. Father, we pray for our island home that we might see a world of continuing beauty and wonder. Empower us to stop being wasteful, to halt the destruction of our forests, lakes, streams and rivers, oceans, and fill us with the Holy Ghost so that we become determined to conserve and protect and to nurture your world and all the light that's on it. We pray to you saying, Father, help us be your light. Father, we pray for our congregation, our family and our friends. Thank you, Father, for the gift of your love. Thank you, Father, for your word and its internal power to guide us. You are the most high and in you alone, we will find our answers. We pray to you saying, Father, help us be your light. Lord, we pray for our sisters and brothers in Christ who have passed from this world and sit with you and your angels. We pray that they will be joined in everlasting, we pray that we will be joined with them in everlasting life with you and share in the joy of your eternal kingdom. We ask this and all in the name, in Jesus' name, amen. And our service will continue with the collect. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <coughs> May the God who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light of the, from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the Jordan River, pour out that Spirit on you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. May God, by the power that turned water into wine at the wedding feast of Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. And perhaps we can ask Edie to do the uh, announcements before we have our closing hymn. I'm telling you, there's more. All right. Today's announcements. Birthdays and anniversaries. Our dear Jean White will be celebrating her 99th birthday on Saturday, January the 22nd. Jean, may you enjoy and celebrate your day as best as you can following the pandemic rules. Happy birthday, Jean. If there are other birthdays this month, please raise your hand to be recognized. Anybody got their hands up for January? Anniversaries, no. Slow time, I guess. <clears throat> now for some work. Martha had her hand up. What is it? It's not an anniversary. Is it her birthday? It's my, it was my birthday on the 11th. I was 67. Well, happy birthday. Happy belated birthday to you, Martha. 67's looking good. Okay, now for some work. Our AGM is being planned for February the 17th with the 24th as a storm date. All AGM reports will be due into Joanne's office by Monday, January the 31st, and that's two weeks plus a day from now. February is also African Heritage Month, and you will hear more of this later. Tom is pleased to inform us that the Dartmouth Outreach is thankful for our monthly donations. Thank you, Tom, for your, your efforts on our behalf. And we received a thank you note from Mission to Seafarers. And we thank uh, Sandra for looking after that on our behalf. I am also thanking my friend Karen Tull for her phone call yesterday regarding the much sought after N95 masks. And thank you, Mabina, for getting the message out to everybody. And Martha has two projects she wants to tell you about. And these do not require a lot of work. And then I will need to speak again once Martha has explained. Uh, uh, thank, yeah, thank you, Edie. Uh, my projects are all are both in recycling. I don't, you probably know these already. One is uh, the egg cartons that once you finish the eggs, the egg cartons are accepted by Walker's Feed out on, um, Coal Harbor oh, Road, yeah. uh, out just past Fong's a little bit. Uh, and they use them, they have uh, chickens and they uh, sell their own eggs. And the second is pill bottles. Uh, Emmanuel Anglican Church in Spryfield has a connection with the Lions Club in Spryfield. The Lions Club has a connection uh, with pharmacists in India and Africa. Both places are having difficulty 
uh, dispensing their medications because they don't have access to pill bottles. So the Lions Club are gathering pill bottles. They ask you to do rinse and dry them and they, uh, Lions Club will uh, package them up and send them on to the pharmacists in, uh, and medical uh, clinics in Africa and in India. And I'd be very happy if you wanna drop them at the church when Joanne is there just leave them on the bench in the front. I will make sure they get to Emmanuel Church in Spryfield. Thank you, Edie. Yes, and remember to remove your uh, information that's on the pill bottle. So remove all the paper. Yes. Yeah. So Martha and I will be back in the office before the end of the month to count the weekly donations. So please mail, uh, drop in the vestry mail slot, drop by the office on Tuesday or Thursday to give your donation to Joanne. We need your donation and we thank all of you who have been keeping your weekly commitments. We are happy to count the offering and to make the deposit. Parish Council will meet on Tuesday, the 18th hmm, via Zoom, we'll see, at 1.30 p.m. And many thanks to Doug for being our reader today. Please let Joanne, Martha, Reverend Ebsry, Edie know if you'd like to be one of our readers. And thanks to everyone who has made this service possible and available. And please think about serving on parish council. Some of our members have been a member at large for almost a decade, if not more. Thank you, everyone. What happened there? Okay. Oh, I got to get back in here. What happened? Colin, will I ask you to finish off oh, right with here. the, the right, hymn, one. Lord, I lift up your lift your name on high. 